A coal pits oscillator had two capacitors and one inductor in the feedback path. A Hartley oscillator is very similar to a coal pits oscillator except that it has two inductors in the feedback path and one capacitor. The two inductors are in the shunt configuration and the capacitor is in the series configuration. That means that all three of these circuit elements shift the phase in the same direction. With three circuit elements, we're able to get a 180 degree phase shift at one particular frequency and the other 180 degree phase shift is given by the inversion which is performed by the amplifier. Let's see how these oscillation conditions translate to the Hartley oscillator. Reactive element 1 is an inductor. Reactive element 2 is also an inductor. Reactive element 3 is a capacitor. The nominal magnitude of the gain has to exceed L2 over L1 in order for the Hartley oscillator to work. I'm going to multiply every term in this equation by omega C3. The proper way then to design a Hartley oscillator would be to choose values for inductors L1 and L2 in order to satisfy the requirements on the gain and then to design the frequency of the oscillator by tuning capacitor C3. I could imagine myself in the lab with a variable capacitor C3 in this circuit. If I held onto the knob of that capacitor and I tuned it so that the capacitor became larger, then the frequency of oscillation would decrease. If I tuned the knob so that the capacitor became smaller, then I would expect a higher frequency of oscillation. But what if I wanted to tune the frequency of oscillation with a signal rather than with a knob? What if I wanted to use a control voltage to change the frequency of oscillation? That could be a very useful thing to do because that's exactly what we need if we ever intend to generate an FM signal, a frequency modulated signal. If we have music, voice, or anything like that encoded into a control voltage, we could use that control voltage to change the frequency of oscillation of a Hartley oscillator and hence generate an FM radio transmitter. I'll now show a strategy for allowing capacitor C3 to be effectively tuned with a control signal rather than with a knob. First imagine that we take capacitor C3 and we split it into two larger capacitors, C3A and C3B. The reason why I said larger rather than smaller is because of the way capacitors in series add. We now might notice that this particular node is a ground for DC signals. I know it's a ground because it's connected to ground through inductor L1. Of course, inductor L1 is going to block very, very high frequency signals, but it passes those very low frequency signals directly to ground. We also have a DC ground at voltage node V2. I know it's a DC ground because it's connected to the ground through an inductor, and inductors are short circuits for very low frequency signals. Now imagine that I connect a DC voltage source or rather any voltage source with a frequency that's very low relative to the frequency of oscillation in the Hartley oscillator. And I connect it between these two capacitors through a large inductor. Sometimes in circuit diagrams, you might see the abbreviation RFC without any value on an inductor. RFC stands for radio frequency choke. It just means use a large inductor. This radio frequency choke ensures that the radio signal that's cycling in the main loop of the Hartley oscillator doesn't get shunted into the AC ground of the tuning voltage. In other words, the frequency of oscillation is blocked in this direction, but the low frequency tuning voltage goes right through that inductor. At this point, if I attach a DC voltage source where it says tuning voltage, the only thing that's going to happen in this circuit is it's going to charge up capacitors C3A and C3B, but it won't have any effect whatsoever on the frequency of oscillation of this circuit. In order to create a voltage tunable Hartley oscillator, the strategy is now to replace one of these capacitors with a different circuit element called a varactor. A varactor is a voltage tunable capacitor. A varactor is essentially a reverse bias diode and it has a circuit element symbol that very closely resembles a diode and it also resembles a capacitor because it's something like a hybrid circuit element. It's a p-injunction 
Because this p-n junction is reverse biased, the width of the depletion region is going to depend on the voltage applied to the diode. If you've never had a class in semiconductors before, it doesn't really matter, but all you need to know is that the parasitic capacitance of a p-n junction is related to the width of this depletion region. Normally, parasitic capacitance is something that we don't want to have in a diode. We want a diode to be ideal. But in this situation, we actually make use of that parasitic capacitance. What we have now is a diode whose parasitic capacitance depends on the applied voltage. That's what a varactor is, and that's what we're going to use in this circuit. We now have a situation where a tuning voltage applied to this pin will change the capacitance of C3B, which then changes the effective capacitance of capacitor C3, which then changes the frequency of oscillation of the Hartley oscillator. If the tuning voltage represents, for example, an audio signal, then what we've done is design an FM transmitter.